All right, it's 11.30, Wednesday evening. The storm is coming on Friday, and I'm exhausted. This has been such a, a wild ride here. You know, The models have been fantastic, really, since uh, it, they've been in agreement, really, since, I guess, Sunday night or Monday, where they projected a large East Coast storm, and there's been some vacillating uh, to the west, back to the east, back to the west. And that changes things a lot. Um, so far, Washington, D.C. and Baltimore have been ground zero for the biggest amounts of snow. We're talking potentially 20 to 30 and in some pockets of, of 36. I can tell you, I just saw the run of the NAM. Uh, and I think the highest total I saw in the NAM, and I don't know if anybody's going to believe this or not, but you can look it up, is 49 inches of snow down towards uh, uh, Virginia. Uh, I think it might have been even West Virginia or Virginia. Um, do I believe that? No, I don't believe that. I don't think anybody's going to see 50 inches of snow. I mean, that's unbelievable. The NAM does this all the time, where it projects ridiculous amounts of snow. Um, only to correct itself a little bit later. So I, I don't I don't believe that. Then we had a run of the GFS right after that, and the GFS is saying six inches of snow for Philadelphia, uh, with the change over to rain, um, as the 850 temperatures, which is about 5,500 feet above uh, in the in the sky, uh, temperatures up there at uh, 5,500 feet would would go above freezing. Um, and here's the deal with that. Once you have a snowflake get down to that level, 5,500 feet, if it melts, it can never become a snowflake again. It will fall. It could refreeze, but it will, it will not become a crystallized snowflake. It will become a sleep pellet. So that's the key area. Um, if you have melting up higher, it is possible for it to refreeze back into a snowflake. But once it crosses the 850 temperature mark, the 5,500 um, feet once it's below that if it's melted it's melted it's either going to fall as rain or if it's cold enough as it goes down a little bit lower it could refreeze but can't refreeze as a snowflake it becomes a sleep pellet um I, it's it's tough i mean one of one of the adages that you hear if, if you're into meteorology is that uh you have to smell the rain to get the snow. And I and and we certainly are going to be close to that rain snow line, I think. I think it's going to be Vineland, New Jersey. If you're in the Philadelphia area, you know where that is. That's, that's probably halfway between Philadelphia and, and Atlantic City, I guess. Um, so I think it's going to be that close. It could even encroach on Philadelphia. I think the models are very, very confused as far as um, intensity. Uh, we have ocean water temperature that's very much above normal right now, and and that is something that the models are trying to trying to figure out. Um, that should lead to thunderstorms. I'm guessing it's going to be thunder snow. That's my that's my hope. I guess as a snow lover, I, I'm hoping it's going to be thunder snow and not sleet or rain. Um, but we have to keep the door open on the possibility of a changeover to something that's not snow, whether that be would be sleet or would be uh, rain. My guess is that we stay mainly snow. I think um, Philadelphia is almost a lock for a foot. You never say definite, but certainly I, I think a foot is, is 90%. Um, we have to watch that rain snow line and see where that where that goes. That, that will dramatically change things. I mean, you could have, you know, maybe Chester and Montgomery County seeing 30 inches of snow and Philadelphia can wind up with a foot because Chester and Montgomery County stay all snow and Philadelphia changes over to sleet. And sleet does a couple of things too. It, number one, it doesn't pile up like snow. It's not fluffy. Number two, if you have 10 inches of snow on the ground and then you get heavy sleet on top of it, it'll compact the snow. So the uh, 10 inches of snow starts to drop down and maybe becomes 7 inches of snow. So sleet really does 
hurt your uh, snowfall totals. I cannot see the shore getting out of this with uh, all all snow. There's no way. It, it's definitely going to be a snow to sleet, probably to rain, especially uh, Cape May, even Atlantic City. Like I said, Vineland, I could see you going to sleet. I can't see you staying all snow. Um, I don't know about rain. Philadelphia, boy, we're right on the border, right on the border between sleet and, and an all snow event. So I'm not going to change the totals that I put out already. I think I'm going to stick with them right now. Remember, it's, it's a first guess. It's really not a forecast. And you can't, and anybody in, in weather will tell you, you don't make a forecast, um, you know, more than 48 hours before the event. So tomorrow, probably tomorrow afternoon, I'll put out a forecast. Now, what do we have going for us? Well, we have the NAM, which is giving us ridiculous amounts of snow. It's given us, uh, you know, uh, 20 to 30 to three feet from DC up to New York City, and that's that's insane. Uh, even back into the Poconos now, one to two feet. The Canadian, the CMC, that's again a crushing blow. It's 20 it, it plus inches, two feet, uh, throughout the entire area. Um, it's the GFS now that is saying change over to rain. So uh, the models are just a tool. You can't take a model run and say this is the forecast. You have to kind of blend them together. You have to look at past history. Um, you know, the other thing is, and I don't know how many people realize this, but when we give a range, when we say, uh, I try not to do 12 inch ranges. I don't like to say one to two feet. That's, that's a pretty big range. But let's say if I give you a, a 15 to 20 or even uh, 15 to 25, 10, 10 inch range. When you have an area, let's say I live in Cherry Hill. So let's say Cherry Hill is getting hammered with, with very heavy snow, maybe thunder snow, you know, thunderstorms over top. It's cold enough to snow and you get thunder snow. Well, when you're getting heavy snow in one area, you're getting air rising. Well, an area nearby has to have air sinking. It's called subsidence. So Cherry Hill could be getting hammered with two to three inch per hour snow rates. And maybe in Montgomery or Bucks County, they're not getting anything. They're getting flurries or maybe they're getting snow showers. So at the end of the storm, you'll see that there's 15 inches, inches in Bucks County, but Cherry Hill's coming in at 28. Well, that's because the air was rising in Cherry Hill. Well, it had to sink somewhere, and it was sinking over in Bucks and Montgomery County. So it's impossible for any forecaster to tell you exactly what's going to fall in your backyard. And the difference between rain and snow is very simple. If after a rainstorm, if I told you, if I said, well, you got three inches of rain today, you would say, oh, okay. Now, you might have only gotten a half an inch, but how do you know? You, you won't see it on the ground. It seeps into the ground. It, it's not, you don't have to shovel it. It's rain. But I can't come to you and say, you got 20 inches of snow when you go outside and you shovel six. So that's the difference between rain and snow. And that's why a lot of times people um, will rip forecasters and say, well, you know, you made a bad forecast. You said I was going to get 15 inches of snow and I only got eight. Well, you may have gotten eight, but maybe one town over got 15. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 what you have to shovel is how much snow you got. And, and, and that's why it's, it's very easy to pick apart forecasts and say, well, these were wrong. Well, yeah, because you can see it. Now, I can't lie to you and tell you that you got 20 inches of snow when you have six in your, in your driveway. But with rain, you don't know the difference. So we're going to stay the course. I think that um, tomorrow will give us a better handle. I'm not going to stay up for the Euro. I think the Euro runs, I can't remember, I think maybe 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm just too tired. I can't can't do that. But tomorrow, uh, I'll take a peek at it and see. I, I, it's going to be a massive storm, no matter what, whether we have a changeover to sleet or not. It's going to be a massive storm. So uh, we're still in, in a position where we're going to, probably get a lot of snow. And even if we have the change over to sleet, I think there's going to be a lot of snow on the ground and a lot of sleet on the ground. Uh, power outages are definitely a possibility, especially if it stays snow because sleet pellets bounce off wires and they bounce off of things. They don't, they don't stick. 
heavy wet snow sticks it'll cling to power lines it'll it'll cling to trees and when you have that kind of weight and then you have winds gusting at 50 miles an hour or more you're going to start to have power lines go down you're going to have trees go down so um dangerous situation too not not just the snow and down the shore it's going to be a really dangerous situation uh flooding coastal flooding and uh tidal flooding severe tidal flooding and coastal flooding is likely probably going to happen i want to thank everybody for um the support that you've given me uh and your confidence in my forecast you know it's a hobby for me and it's a lot of fun and the more people that uh who get involved and and uh, are part of it i had 77 people like the page since uh monday so that's pretty cool and, and i'm really appreciative so hang in there i think uh tomorrow i'll give you a forecast and and hopefully uh when I forecast comes true, we'll see what happens. All right. But whatever you do, just be careful. Okay. It's going to be a rough one out there. So take it easy.